when I first learned about embodied carbon, I was confused and honestly pretty frustrated. I thought I was pretty environmentally conscious and informed person, and I did not understand why I was only just learning about it. Uh, to give you all context for why this might be a topic you're only recently hearing about more, or maybe just to make myself feel a bit better, I think it helps to understand that historically speaking, operational carbon dominated a building's overall carbon impact. So what did we do? We learned, we worked, and as a team, we've all helped to make changes through advancements in building performance, more stringent energy codes, better equipment. This dominance has been decreasing, and now the relative impact of embodied carbon has increased. In fact, the Carbon Leadership Forum predicts that our emissions will be about 50-50 between operational and embodied by 2050. Bringing that embodied carbon topic into the spotlight, which is why we're here to talk about it today and probably why we're all starting to focus even more. And why enclosures? One piece of the context for why a building enclosure engineer might not have had as much exposure to embodied carbon in the past is that generally speaking, a building's structural elements have a far greater impact on the building's embodied carbon than the enclosure systems do. Simply put, structural systems have more mass, so they have more embodied carbon. And our structural friends have been talking about this a lot longer than we have as a result. That does not mean we have no impact. Of course, it will depend on the type of building you're working on, the, the scope of work of a repair or a replacement, if it's new design. Generally speaking, we tend to see the enclosure systems coming in second to the structure when we look at the proportion of embodied carbon. So enclosures matter and we can make a difference.